Now, whether or not a driver's license, I mean, here's the point conservatives make, and it's a fairly valid point. I, if you're in government, I could never visit you or Eric Holder or anybody else without a driver's license. Is that not a minimal standard, particularly when we say we'll give you one for free? Most of the voter uh, ID laws say they'll, if you go down there, they'll get you a driver's license for free if you don't drive. I don't know. I think that, you know, for example, I don't think dead people should vote. I'm just, that's one thing I'm, I will not compromise on. Dead people shouldn't vote. Dead people still do vote in some elections, we and have. there still is some fraud. And so we should stop that, and one way of doing it is... Although the incidence of fraud is relatively It probably is, and I think small. Republicans may have overemphasized this. It remains a bone of contention between Democrat and Republican. The concern over voter fraud, those using our electoral process to their own ends and skewing the results. But a recent study reignited the debate in looking at more than 10 years of results from ground level. And now both sides are scrambling to turn this to their advantage. Let's welcome to Midpoint, the gentleman who conducted the study in question and thus has the answers at the ready, professor of law at Loyola Law School, Justin Levitt, joined by a candidate for California Secretary of State, Pete Peterson. Gentlemen, we thank you both for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Professor, Very I'm going to start here. with you because we talked about this a little bit last week. So if you would please give us the capsulized results here, because when you start to look at the numbers that you looked at and what you found, it's pretty damning. It's, well, it's striking at the very least. Uh, what we did was we looked at incidents of alleged voter fraud, uh, but only of a certain kind. That's alleged voter fraud that the new set of controversial laws, the restrictive voter ID laws, are designed to prevent. That's somebody showing up at the polls pretending to be someone else. That's why you'd want to ask someone for their driver's license, for example. We looked over the last 14 years, there have been over 1 billion with a B, votes cast in elections, and 31 instances where someone's raised a hand and said, I think, not even proven, I'm alleging I have credible evidence to believe that somebody pretended to be somebody else at the polls. Pete, when you look at those kind of results, doesn't it speak to the fact that there really is no such thing as voter fraud, at least when it comes down to the ID issue? Yeah, I, I'm afraid that I'm in, quite in agreement with the professor. Obviously, he's speaking from data. I've I've seen not only that, but uh, research and studies that have been done in other states. Uh, and speaking, quite frankly, as I have been with county registrars here in California, um, they will say that when there has been some instance of uh, what could be called voter fraud, that happens uh, most often in the area of absentee ballots and in the gathering of signatures to either qualify ballot measures or candidates. But the kind of ba uh, voter fraud that we think of most often as it relates to voter ID at the polling place is a, a very rare event. Professor Levin, let's get back again to, to this study here because there's a couple of important points that need to be made. This looked at IDs specifically. You didn't look at anything else. And to be very fair, there's a tremendous amount of other items and other ways to commit voter fraud other than just this, correct? Oh, and that's absolutely right. And, and uh, Mr. Peterson actually mentioned a few of them. And, and here, too, you're going to get a lot of agreement. When there is fraud in the system, I mean, it's gotten a little bit better since uh, a new law, federal law, passed in 2002, but, but still hasn't fixed the whole thing. It's fraud in the absentee process. It's fraud exactly, as he said, in uh, the process of, of petitioning and uh, signature gathering. Um, this study was focused only on one of the most hot button issues, which is the requirement to present an ID at the polls. There are other problems out there, and I'll add to that list, unfortunately, Buying votes still happens for local races, uh, largely in Appalachia, but certainly not exclusively. Um, and, and plain old-fashioned insiders stealing the election, stuffing the ballot boxes. That's been around for a long time, and unfortunately, it's not going out of style as, as quickly as it needs to. So should we have to say that while a number of Republicans would probably disagree with this statement, that if you're going to go on the voter ID issue, stop because you're wrong? I think it's important for people, if they're going to go on the voter ID issue, to actually weigh facts. Um, and I, to also to be clear, I'm not against all methods that someone has to show that they are who they say they are. In fact, every state in the country requires some way for people to prove that they are who they say they are. It's just that the most restrictive laws, uh, the laws that say either you show up with a certain type of government issue document or nothing, you go home and your ballot doesn't count, those tend to cause more problems than they actually solve. But there are lots of, there's lots of room in between for very reasonable laws that promote security of elections. 
uh, but don't keep actual eligible voters from casting ballot ballots. Pete, uh, Pete if we're going to get down to the, the bottom line on this, isn't it just worth yeah. saying that what's wrong with having an ID? I mean, you will hear that from so many people every time this comes up. Shouldn't everybody just simply have, and we're not talking about a national system here. We're not talking about anything that is intrusive, but just having a basic standard, I live here, ID. Well, again, I and again, I agree with the professor on this. I think there are uh, there are steps you can take in that direction. But I have to say, as someone who's running for secretary of state here in California, and the professor just alluded to this, uh, California is the last state in America that falls outside the federal mandate to have a statewide voter database. Uh, that was something that was uh, federally mandated under HAVA, which was, I believe, the, the piece of legislation the professor might be alluding to. And in that, there is actual opportunity for voter fraud there as it relates to uh, the quality of our voter rolls. Again, California is the only state in America that continues to uh, run its voter system county by county. And in that, again, not so much at the polling place, but in the absentee ballots that we send out, uh, the nonpartisan Pew Center on the state re recently evaluated California's voter rolls and estimated that we have at least one million out-of-date voter files in California. So as it relates to uh, the, the integrity of our ballot, I really want to make sure that Californians focus on issues that, that desperately need fixing right now and that really do connect to at least the possibility of voter fraud. And that is this issue of uh, our voter rolls in California. So there is certainly something here. I mean, that's where you would agree with that. If the Republicans or the right, whatever you want, is going to pick on a certain thing, stop worrying about the ID and worry about other things, such as what you mentioned. Also, what the professor mentioned, buying votes, insider stealing, that does exist. Now it's a matter of having to look into that, correct? I think that's true. I think that gets into election monitoring. I think Republicans really should be involved in those uh, types of practices, certainly the volunteering uh, to serve as poll workers. I think that's important. You know, Los Angeles County, which is where I live, uh, we had met several polling places actually closed down because uh, at least the county registrar said there were not poll workers uh, willing to volunteer uh, for those jobs. And uh, so I think there are issues related to the integrity of the ballot, but Quite frankly, the biggest issue we have in California is we don't have enough people voting legally, uh, much less the question of how many people are voting illegally. Isn't that something, so though, that, that needs to, if we're going to talk about this, that's something that the Democrats and the Republicans should get together on, because wouldn't you want that to be taken care of? Absolutely right. I, I really do think that as it pertains to the trust that we put as Californians, much more as Americans. Uh, these are issues that really should cut across party lines. And as it pertains to the issues facing Californians and particularly the Secretary of State's office, I've heard people from both sides of the aisle say that uh, we may be living through one of the worst Secretary of State administrations in our history. And certainly as it relates to using technology to inform and engage voters, and especially, again, this issue of the, of the voting rolls, uh, California has a long way to go in ways that really should involve people from all sides of the aisle. Professor Levitt, I guess I'm just going to ask you to speculate here because we've talked about so many other things here, and you did the study on one basic issue, but I'm looking here at vote buying, coercion, fake registration forms, voting from the wrong address, ballot box stuffing by officials, all in on the scam. We got a long way to go here. You need you need another 14 years, don't you? Well, we do have a long <laughs> way to go. Uh, and and the good news for everybody is that uh, all of the things that you just mentioned they happen far more often than the sort of fraud that ID could fix. Uh, but they happen far less often than every time every election. I mean, the vast majority of elections in this country are clean. Uh, they're run fairly and they're run with some basic competence. Um, I would love to move that ball forward and and frankly vigorously agreeing with an awful lot of what mr peterson has said uh one of the principal opportunities both to cut down on wrongdoing and to serve the public is to get statewide information technology up to snuff uh one of the things that, that people from both sides of the aisle have found ways to agree on are systems like online registration that feeds a central database uh, california is limping there 
um, without the sort of systems that Mr. Peterson's talking about, it's having a tough time really making it effective. But the wonder of that system using 21st century technology is that the roles are more accurate, more inclusive, more reliable, and more resistant to fraud. And by the way, much, 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 much cheaper than paying a bunch of temps in the week before election to data enter thousands or hundreds of thousands of voter registration forms by hand. Unfortunately, we are all out of time. You just took us into the 21st century technology. That means we should have that taken care of in at least 30 or 40 years with the way most governments run, unfortunately, of course. Professor Levitt, also Pete Peterson, we thank you both for joining us today. Thanks very much. All right, next hour here on Midpoint. Has the GOP picked a winner in the border crisis come the midterm elections? That's coming up right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.